the ACT uh, manager and because of my skills that the behavior looked like. So, um, you tell me to take this off there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hi. Okay, let's go. Now that you can see. But yeah, so I've been here all of, I think this is the third week. Yeah. And uh, the other shelter I was at, um, it's not unique to here, and it was an open admission shelter. So, um, you know, coming here was a blessing. And especially the fact that we have you guys, and you know, it's, it's night and day, it's amazing. So thank you guys for actually coming today. And a lot of times, I think volunteers kind of get pushed to the side, or that you don't have the right, you know, the um, respect or the recognition. And I just, like I said, from my end of it, you know, want to say that I appreciate anybody because I'm not 20 people. You know, if we, if this works. We'll see all the behaviors that people don't want to work with here from certain dogs diminish and sometimes altogether. That's what I want. And the people who are comfortable with them, you know, not everybody's going to be comfortable right away. That's okay. But I'll show you. I'll be using McDreamy or Quentin today. Um, I don't know if you guys. Yeah. So, uh, but anyways, I want, I'm somebody, I used to own my own dog club. Uh, and I had a 501c3 rescue as well, state certified. Um, and I specialize in bully breed dogs. But anyways, uh, so I, when I do these with my clients as well, I like people to understand the whys. You know, it's, it's one thing for me to say, hey, you guys, we're doing this. Maybe if you see why we're doing it, it's, you, it's yeah. easier to go the extra mile. Does that make sense? Like a lot of my clients in the past have seen trainers or you know, other outlets. They never understood why. Why is my dog doing this? Why is my dog trying to eat my neighbor? If you explain why, then you know it's easier to work with. Okay. So we're focusing on that first. I made this this weekend because I've never had volunteers. Number one. Hey. Hello. I've never um, okay. had the opportunity to do things you know here that I can do. So um, I made this Saturday. Okay. Granny just had a major behavior. Did you hear that? <laughs> I'm sure he did. <laughs> which I didn't add, uh, there's one common denominator in that, the, all the long-term stayers, the ones that are back and forth, back and forth. They're getting to the point now where they're like, look, I'm done, you know, I, I can't. You know, going to foster is wonderful. I mean, it's, it's amazing, because we didn't have that either uh, back where I was from. And the fact that we have that, perfect. But sometimes, you know, we need to work here. That's where they're primarily, you know, 75% of their time until they're adopted is here. So. Uh, where does this come from? And again, we're talking about all the dogs in um, the shelter, cats too, but now I'm talking about dogs. Fear and anxiety, there's different levels of behavior, and we're starting with the fear and anxiety. Lower confidence level dogs, like Dane, uh, you know, Ricky, some of them that have just confidence levels issues because of their been to different shelters or rehomed or maybe lack of socialization. Uh, there's pre-existing fears or behaviors that increase here. Um, and limited past socialization, breed specific tendencies. Okay, we don't talk about that here because it's everybody's a mix. You can clearly see what an Akita is. Yeah, yeah. You can clearly see what Adobe is. Yeah. And some of them have that, you know, German Shepherds, some of them have a lot of those, you know, anxiety characteristics. They're just in them, they're bred in them. So, uh, and again, fear and anxiety is a little bit different with the reactivity that we see. It's more defensive based. Uh, there's offensive aggression and defensive aggression. And offensive um, is more forward facing and they actually will seek out that trigger. Okay, so they're, they're confident in saying, okay, well, I'm here. So if you think about it and we walk through the kennels, we'll see most of it's defensive. So even though it's all oh, it looks like aggression and you know, really uncomfortable, there's different um, thoughts. Uh, so frustration, this is where most of them are at right now. At limited actual socialization with people because I wa I watch some of the ACTs and some of the volunteers I you know in the yard and you know it's wonderful that people come to walk them but literally they never interact with the dog like they're just letting them out so basically these animals are still alone they're alone 24 hours a day unless people are walking by and then it starts barrier aggression uh, and you see like a ton of dogs in there that have it it starts most of the time where the dog just wants to interact with you. And then over the course of time, 
it starts associating you know you as well you're ignoring it and walking by as you're the issue so the frustration mounts and it becomes where they see a person walking by and they're like oh i hate you uh, and they're just really frustrated okay so um i'm sure people have discussed that with you guys i don't know in the dog 101 you know if that has been what barrier aggression is that's no. why they're so different when you get them out of kennels. So, you know, they're just angry. And a very aggression is anything that restricts freedom of movement in a dog. So cars, leashes, um, windows, uh, you know, anything that restricts kennels, freedom of movement. So usually if a dog has very aggression with one thing, it'll have very aggression with another. They just, their, their frustration level is of a three-year-old their whole lives. So they don't understand like, okay, well, I'm mad about this. So you could see a dog barking at a window and it gets worse over time, worse and worse and worse, because to them, you know, they're barking and the person is just riding their bike by and, you know, they're like, okay, well, I just forced them to go away. So that's where it starts sometimes in a home. Um, so visual and or auditory stimuli without being able to interact, that's pretty self-explanatory. Um, highly trainable and or high energy working dogs. Let's see, McDreamy. Like I did nose work with him, you guys. That dog could be a service dog if he didn't have the issues with um, cats and other dogs. But literally, Sam was watching, and it, it, night and day. Like, he is, remember that day of McDreamy with the cones? Uh, he's so overly intelligent that most dogs, I used to assess dogs for service dog candidacy or ESA work, and legitimately, it was interesting because I had set up, like, just nose work, cones with him. And most dogs will kind of get into the rhythm, like, oh, I'm just gonna knock him over. Okay, well, he went in there one time, and I just kind of showed him the cone, boom. And he was doing it with his paw. It was the way he was doing it. But the interesting thing, and this is what I meant by the, you know, the, the, the intelligence level, is I tried tricking him, and I pointed to empty ones, because I had half of them that were empty. And he just looked at it, and I was like, uh, no. And then he went and, uh, went and did the rest of them. So that, again, to me, is working ability. And so they're struggling a lot more in here, okay, like a ton more. So Quentin, McDreamy, Logan. Um, so, yeah, barriers, boredom, noise, increased arousal. It's always the one at the end. Uh, I, my, my worst favorite kennels are the one, my worst kennels are the ones that are right when you walk in the door. So where Jack Skellington is, um, those are, and so it gets everybody else going. And so the frustration level is pretty high in there. Uh, we're going to start playing more sensory things like music. I'm alternating every day, like classical one day, the next spring course, the next, um, you know, something else. So, so different things for them just to get them out of the shelter environment. We also have bubble blowers that we're using. Uh, so I built an SOPs. Renee is taking over it because she started it. SOPs for uh, all five senses. So you guys are going to be able to help, please, with the nose work part of it to get the frustration energy level down. Okay. Um, so if anybody, we can go to the next one, has any, they've never been alone. And this again, a lot of these guys are developing uh, separation anxiety. If they didn't have it here, they'd go home with it. So, uh, yeah. Any questions on that so far? I'm just kind of going over this, like I said, because I want you guys to know why. And we're, we're just gonna breeze through it quick. Uh, generalize, you guys have probably seen a lot of these, you know, hiding, cowering, trembling and panting, whining foaming and drooling. Uh, you guys have probably seen a lot of those. Again, I don't know what's in the dog 101. Uh, the generalized basic signs of frustration though, you can see that more on the other side, where charging the kennel door, refusing to kennel up. Um, Logan will sit there and put the brakes on and lay on the ground. And I found out my ACTs were crawling through the guillotine and doing nothing. I'm like, I'm not doing that, ladies. We're gonna, no, that's not gonna happen. So, uh, yeah, but they will refuse. They just start to pull on the leash, door darting, other body language, biting on the leash. They're just notorious for that. Uh, if you look at the board in there, most of them have, um, you know, when they're in the yard, you need to play with them on the line, you need to do this and that. Well, that's all stemmed around the same thing. They're like, I don't want to go back in. And, you know, the four walks a day is almost like a tease. So, you know, they're going out for like 10 minutes and then they're like, well, I don't want to go back in. Does that make sense to you? Okay. Um, Okay, so this is what I've seen. This is the issue I have, and this is why I called you guys in here. So a lot of them are starting to show abnormal repetitive behaviors, pattern pacing and circling and tail chasing. Uh, one of the main ones that's doing the circling is actually Quentin. Have you guys been in the yard with him? He'll pick up the leash and he'll sit 
there literally in a circle like this and just, you know, turn and turn and turn. I didn't get a video of it. Have you ever seen that? Okay, that's bad. <laughs> that's them finally having a meltdown. Like, I, it's, it's abnormal behavior. So, um, and I'm pointing these things out because you guys are key. Because, again, I can't stay here 24 hours. I, I worked six days last week, but I can't live here. So, uh, again, this would be him tail chasing. You know who else does that? Ferdinand. How long has Ferdinand been here? Long term. So he actually will sit there and chase his tail and bite it and over and over again. And Quentin, you could see they start stop engaging in you guys. You know, they stop engaging in us. They're, they're more focused on biting the leash and being super, you know, naughty and, and you know, doing circles than us because they're past that point. So uh, licking the walls, gates and doors. Logan, Logan has started. I got one of my ACTs messaged me at like eight o'clock at night, like, I, what is this? What, why is he doing this? And he's gotten to the point now where if once you get him inside, he'll start licking the bars and he'll lick where the opening is. And then he started to bite a little bit to pull on it and then he'll start teeth, you know, tooth chattering. Stress. They're like, I don't want to go back in anymore. So it's just their way of trying to make it work. Does that make sense? Um, and then another one we don't really need to, Romeo. Uh, okay, jumping wall to wall. There is a German Shepherd in there now, that Augustus, I think. Um, Jack Skellington, again, you see the pattern of the long-termers. Okay, so them, their behaviors started there. Now they're to the chronic maladaptive point. That means that they will go home and guess what? They're gonna come back. Okay, so they're going to these homes and they're getting all the separation anxiety. Athena, Athena, when you're outside, she's like, oh my God, and she can't not be around you. Okay, so that is an indicator that you have probably severe separation anxiety when she gets to a home. Uh, and, Kennel aggression, increased aggression uh, from lack of socialization, increased barking, jumping, lunging, and nipping. And a lot of times you'll start to see over time too with the frustration, they start losing their bite inhibition. Uh, so when they're mouthing, they might accidentally break skin or it's just starting over time uh, with the frustration. So um, inability to focus, hypervigilance. Now this is what I want you guys to, we're gonna work on, okay? Because the more we can get these dogs, they have 300 million uh, nose receptors. We have six. So if we're getting them to see the world through their nose down, then they won't be hypervigilant in the yards as well. Because the ones that have barrier aggression, we already know, you know, like Quentin's starting to pull the plastic out. Uh, so he is, we don't want them to be right there. Like we, if we could put them down farther away, so when you guys are walking, the less they see the better. Um, you know, we're trying to get them to decompress a little bit and let go of the frustration because when I started, one of the things they asked for was play groups. And I'm like, you might not, like, <laughs> that's like all these frustrated dogs we're gonna throw them in the yard when they, they don't, again, they only learn by association. So again, the barrier aggression came because, and they think it's us and other dogs. So I'm not gonna throw them together and pray that the play group's gonna go great right now. We have to decompress them first. <laughs> Uh, so the other thing is compulsive grooming and or licking of items and body. Romeo's doing that. They brought it up the other day to me. They're like, why, you know, look what he's doing. And he's starting to nibble groom and then he'll like constantly lick bedding and then his feet. That's from stress. So, yeah. So, uh, and some of it, like I said, we don't notice until we, we see the obvious and it's annoying to us and impacts us. So. Uh, destructive common items, uh, zipper, one of the vets just told me that they had to pull more foreign matter from him because he is chewing things that normally they don't and ingesting. Like he took the whole bottom of the guillotine door the other day and just ripped it all down. Yeah. And he's a long term too. So, uh, extreme sh hair shedding, uh, people will come in and they're like, oh my God, don't you have a dog that doesn't shed? Well, yeah, take them home. Three quarters of the time, once you take them home, they won't shed. It's stress. <laughs> So uh, weight loss, diarrhea, you see the ones that paint the kennel everywhere, that's stress related. You can always tell because it's super, super smelly, because it's like, yeah. Uh, chattering and shaking, we, we talked about that. So is there any questions? Um, what we're doing now, like I said, all of the, the ones that are advanced, they're all gonna go home with these issues. So we're going to try to decompress them the best we can and pray. You know, I'll, I'll obviously do post adoption or whoever needs to do post adoption, it's just we need help. All right, so this is Quentin. That's the one she sent me. I just wanted you guys to see it, if you guys have noticed it going kennel. Uh, and he's, or Logan, sorry. And he's extremely intelligent. And now you can see the chattering, see? 
So that's him. He only does it. He doesn't do it at the bottom to the front. He only does it because he's basically begging us to let him back out. And he doesn't know how else to tell us. So he doesn't have the negative behavior where he's mouthing because he's being appropriate. But he'll do this licking back there for the whole time that, you know, the five, 10 minutes and going around. And now he's starting to yank on the bars and pull. Uh, this is the one, like I said, Quentin, this is not Quentin, but uh, I used this video that I can't seem to start. Because some people are, they haven't seen him do this. Why isn't this working, guys? I'm sorry. GG. Well, okay, I can't get it. Do you know? I'm going to just skip that one. Well, maybe we'll use Quentin. You can see him. But, okay, so this guy in this video is very common. I used it from another shelter. The dog's sitting in the kennel and just like repetitively spinning for up to 20, 25 minutes. And then they go home and, oh, of course. They go home and do it. And people are like, why do they still do that? It's residual. Uh, I have a dog now that she has barrier aggression. You can literally be right here. And then like, I'll put my dog on the line and she'll just start going at, you know, going at the, and it's literally the dog was just right next to you. So it imprints in their mind, right? So, is it working? Okay, hold on. Repetitive circling behavior. There, see? Mm -hmm. Does that look like Quentin? Except for if you have a leash, he'll do this with the leash and so I started using the metal one to kind of distract him. It'll kind of boot him in the rear, and he's like, oh, what was that? And redirect him, because we don't, we want him to not do that anymore. Um, so yeah, that's Quentin. And those are the examples. And now to fix it, uh, learning by trial and error. So they've learned by trial and error that jumping on them, jumping at you guys, <coughs> mouthing, biting, uh, Logan laying on the ground uh, is, highly rewarding because you know that's another 10 minutes that you guys are all frustrated like get in here and while well, that's 10 minutes they're gonna be out so you know that that's why we're gonna switch it uh, and make their time a little bit easier and it's interesting though because in there we have door darters too are they darting uh, I, I don't know if they're darting in or out but some of the dogs that are fearful of us are darting just to get away so you know I mean sometimes you get them from hoarding situations or uh, barrel you know and they're darting to flee um, how do we remedy? Okay, so nose work. All right, and this we're gonna start doing. I've already talked to three of my ACTs about it. Uh, we're scenting the dog food. Some of these guys don't need a bunch of calories. If I had, in my perfect world, if I had like freeze dried liver and like a coffee grinder, I would always tell my clients to use dog food and you almost do it uh, like Muddy Buddies. Do you guys know what that is? Where they're like chocolate over cereal and then there's mm -hmm. powdered sugar. Same thing. So these, if, if I could have something like that, the individual pieces of dog food would be scented with that liver powder. Mm -hmm. So the value is the same, and they only get it when they're training. So some of these guys don't need the extra calories, but we're doing this instead, because I don't have all that, uh, is like there's little bits of hot dogs, there's little bits of cheese, and we're putting this in the fridge. So you know when you guys go to get it, it should already be scented and left in there. Um, to the dogs, it's all the same thing. But, all right, so nose work. We're gonna go out, I'm gonna show you Quentin. Uh, I want you guys to start when you go back and get them out uh, to, did I not bring the other leash? All right, so the ones that are, are leash biting, uh, do a, a two-handed leash method. So I don't know if anybody's told you guys that, you know, you always wanna have two leashes, why? Because they're doing it now so they can force interaction. So we're gonna use your leash and this leash and anytime he goes to bite, he as in Quentin or whoever else bites the leash, that leash, drop it. And then he'll go he pick up the other one. Because that way you're still having the dog contained. He's still maybe biting in the leash, but you can move forward with him with one, you know, with a different leash. And sometimes what we're doing is we're having them lose the value in the leash. So they have it ingrained in their mind so much now that the leash is their only way out. Because this association, they're gonna keep holding on to that. So again, in the yard too, the ones you leave, um, you just leave on, just ignore them. And the two-handed, you can drop one on the ground. I've been trading up. I actually taught McDreamy to bring his own leash. So I have a video of that. I'll say bring it and he'll come over and he'll bring me his leash. So 
Uh, we're just changing the association that hey, the leash means nothing, it's us. And you can calm down, we're not gonna, you know, um, send you back right away. So, scatter feeding in the yard or food caching. I'm going through this quickly because I will show you guys. Uh, the more you guys do this, the less negative behavior you'll have, and it's night and day. Uh, Quentin, I had the three ACTs out, and they go, oh my God, he's never done that before. He was doing zoomies. And all he does, usually in the yard, again, is turn circles. But uh, zoomies, like, I don't know if you guys, you guys, everybody knows what zoomies are, mm -hmm. but it's, it's locomotory play. And it's basically like the equivalent of a child jumping for joy. Mm -hmm. So basically giving him a job to do and giving him something new, he was like thanking me and like doing actual zoomies and running instead. He had dropped the leashes and he was being normal. <laughs> That's what we're working on. Um, so when entering and exiting the kennel, I don't know how much is taught, you know, if you guys do this in the Dog 101, but uh, you toss the overhead treats so the dog is not focused on you entering and exiting. So I don't know if you guys do that now. Just literally, and what you're using instead of treats is the dog food, okay? So um, they're just not getting a bunch, but it will be scented, so to them it's treats. Uh, but you're gonna toss it overhead, and then it's called scatter feeding. And then you can enter and exit the kennel easier. So they're busy on the ground, you know, eating it, boom, you're leashing them up and they're calmer when you exit. And what I have been telling people to do is you basically make a, a bread brochure. So the more we can get these guys looking at the ground and not hypervigilant, like, oh my God, it's Clinton coming over here, oh my God, or is that Athena? You know, they're all amped up. It's like running through a dark alley. So the more we get them to focus on the ground, the better, right? Does that make sense so far? So that's why I don't care what you guys, I would prefer, you prefer you use the dog food, and I don't care how much you do, because it's dog food. So we're gonna just kind of scatter it as we go. And the first couple of times, it'll take a minute, you know, for them to learn, okay, that I have a job to do, and learn what we're doing. Um, but eventually, you guys should be able to just have them go right in there. And uh, food caching, I'll have cones. I have, um, you know, you can scatter feed before you go in the kennel, I don't care however it's done. Food caching, you know, is literally, I did this with, um, was it McTraining? It, you go out and in different parts, anywhere you want. It's like an Easter egg hunt. I'll go out there and put the, the food caches like that or scatter feed and that'll give them something to do. Okay? Um, and the two handed leash system we went over. Uh, the other thing I would ask for you guys, anybody who interacts and really goes through those kennel doors, you know, in the dens, have treats and walk by them. Uh, I've been trying to do more shape training with them to try to get them to call. So uh, all I'm asking you guys is anytime you walk by a dog in a kennel, I don't care if the dog stretches, um, you know, mark that. So marking, all I want you to do is say yes, drop the treats. And I prefer you not to hand the treats because that throws off training, uh, toss it over. Because then you're also giving them nose work to do. You don't need to hand the dog the treat. Toss two or three over, walk away. Because then they're also not focusing on you walking away. So there's a dual effect there. But, uh, you know, and training, again, separate, you know, yes, but I'll get into that and then I won't. Uh, so do you have any questions on that? But a, like a marker word, most of you know clicker training? Yes, no, okay, well, we're not gonna get into that now, we don't have to, but marker word, anytime, these dogs are gonna start to know the word yes, and that they're gonna get something good and they did something. So that's all you guys, I'm asking if you can just walk through there once before you start the walks, just to kind of combat the public who walks through there and gives nothing, you know, because we don't want them to be like, here you go, and then, you know, they're going to bite hands. So uh, just again, boop, and you're done, just to help us to get the stress level down and make their adoptability cool. Okay, uh, la, 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 la. so dogs should be in the last yard to the left, uh, just instead of that area where they walk. So do you guys have any questions on that? All right, cool. What? What did you just say? I, we well, didn't hear yeah. the part. Yeah, I don't even know. Um, I mean, we'll go outside. I guess the visual is better, anyways. So, uh, yeah. What? The, dog, the, dog, the last thing you said about the dog, their reactivity should be. Oh, to try to get them like the farthest runs. Even like I had Jack Skellington, he likes to stare in that first glass one. You know, I know it's the biggest yard, but he stares in there. If dogs go by, so I've been talking to the adoption staff because it all has to go together, okay? Because the adoption staff too, he has pretty severe barrier aggression and you know, I've been telling them to bring him out second. So you put the adopters in first, 
him second because I tried to do a meet and greet, you know, kind of watch them and they had left him in that glass. So by the time he was actually going to meet the dog, he was already very angry because he could see the dog. He's got very aggression. You see the dog walk by the glass then you're bringing it outside. You know, it's, it's too late because he's been waiting there like, oh my God, what's going to happen to me? You know, I'm very frustrated. Yeah, that, that. So uh, you guys don't really need to know much about this, but I'm doing this as well for the staff here because a lot of them don't know what any of this stuff is. So um, I ordered these because uh, everybody wants play groups and you guys eventually will know what these are if you help in play groups. Okay. So air horn, uh, same thing as a boat horn. You, you know, ex de what is it? De depress it and it'll make a really loud noise. This should be in, in replace of the shaker cans. Okay. Now the issue with the shaker cans, the issue with the spray bottles, you know, I, if a dog is, fighting with another dog, I don't really feel so inclined to go up to it and go, I don't really want to be that person, okay, or to go up to its face and, sh and spray him. I mean, there's redirective aggression, so I don't feel like getting bit, okay? So this is your distance. This, and also, what's nice is if we hear, we can hear it normally. So if this goes off, I know somebody out there, hopefully you don't need something, <laughs> like maybe I'll run out there, okay? So this will usually deter any dog. Uh, the next would be the pet corrector again. This to me is like a spray bottle or um, I don't even know what to equate, equate it to because you still have to get you know within air range of the, of, the, of the dog. And if the dog's already at the point you know where it's over a threshold and it's biting or something, you know you're right here. So I don't really that will be at your <laughs> what, what is the right word? This will be available to you if you guys need it, but um, <laughs> again, just, yes, thank you. That's your disposal. It's been a very long week, right? Already. Um, so again, this would be first, second, third. This here is super easy. You flip it over and you express it. This is like pepper spray for dogs. Okay, that's obviously if a dog is past the point where you can't even get them to, you know, work with you. Uh, so, and again, some of this you don't need to know unless you see you see Emily in the yard, right? And, and you're the only one out there. You're like, oh God, here, you know, and pray. But this thing here is a brick stick. And I was surprised like nobody knows really how to use these things. But if a dog's locked on, all of like three quarters of the damage that dogs do to humans or do to other dogs is from us yanking them apart. If we can stop that and we find out who the aggressor is, you'll be able to tell, uh, you know, you take the stick and hopefully you have a leash already and you insert it because when dogs bite it's usually just the front ones that are locked tight and you can actually take it as close back to the common sewer as possible stick it in and you're going to turn it that forces it enough open in any kind of like animal skin uh where you can pull them back okay but you better hope you have that leash on there already so any questions on that okay so Again, these things you don't really have to worry about. This is something else we can do with enrichment. It's also a training tool. Um, these are so fun, you guys. Basically a big cat toy for dogs. So, um, Renee, maybe, thank you, because you can help me. <laughs> We're gonna get out McDreamy and, and or Quentin. And these, again, does anybody know what these are? Uh -uh. Literally, it's a big cat toy. Like, of all the ones with prey drive, love it. And she's been trying to push these. We have a couple of them. I have one of my personal ones. So you want to help? Because we're done with this part. We just have to. Yeah, I just got to do one more thing. Do you want to grab them? Yes. Uh, and you guys, if you want to, again, this is going to be quick five minutes or maybe 10. 10 minutes and we're done. It's just the more we can do this, we'll see different dogs. You know, and it makes our lives so much better instead of like getting eaten out there. Yeah. Because of negative frustration behavior. So, um, do you, what is the easiest way to have him go in a yard next? Yeah. He's gonna be so distracted. I don't care if we use Quentin or McDreamy, I guess, was naughty. Mm -hmm. Why would happen? I don't fully know. I, it was me, Renee. Uh, McDreamy, I've had out probably a dozen times, no issue. When I put him back in the cage, and I didn't throw the food, and I mean, I love the stuff you said. He, I, trying to get him the leech off the collar is when he kind of at me. Did not bite me, just didn't want to go back. He's not on my shirt. Yeah. No wonder. Yeah, 
he's just mouthing, but it's getting to the point again. It's us Yeah, and again, that they deteriorate. That's exactly the long termers, and uh, just depends on their history. So that's why we're going to help fix it. And once they're exhausted, 15 minutes of mental stimulation. I don't care if you're training. And I am a, I train with offer and conditioning. I'm not as much of a lure trainer as a lot of trainers, okay? 15 minutes of that, of nose work, of tossing food on the ground, is equal to an hour of a walk, okay? Because people don't realize animals are very sentient beings. They don't need to be lure trained all the time. It's like sit here, go here, go here, do this, here's your food in a bowl. That stinks. So when you force them to use their minds and figure out how these, you know, where the cones are, use their nose, find out where the food is, you see a different, they're exhausted. They're like, well, this stinks. I don't know, I have to really work for it? Okay. And you'll see a dog that wants to go back and count, especially because you're tossing this stuff in there too. Does that make sense? That's my end. So you prefer we don't bring treats in, correct? Because they don't need the calories. A couple of them don't need the calories. The, this dog food is the same because it's scented with the hot dog and the cheese as normal. Again, if anybody's got an extra coffee grinder, I will get chicken liver freeze-dried and I'll grind it up into a powder. So she's means- talking about the enrichment treats, right? The ones that you guys bring? Right. Yeah. Do you want, do you still want them to, to make to the make enrichment the fro- treats? They're the ones that make those frozen. The frozen the treats. Oh yeah, this is separate. Okay. Okay. This is for walkers. This is okay. for walkers. Okay. Are you guys want walkers? Okay. Yeah, they are. Oh, I was like, <laughs> Talk but they bring uh, okay. they yeah, bring so the enrichment treats and so make them. Okay. Yeah. No, this is everything. The more we can do, like I'm doing bubbles in there for God's sake and, and classical music. So, so uh, yeah, that's great. And that's also thermal sensory. So it's totally different because it's, it's cold. Right? Um, okay. So this we're going to be using for nose work. There's the difference. You're not going to take the walking. Yeah. Nose work. Ready? Yeah. You want me to get them out? And then we're going to teach you guys how to dog fish. It's also a training tool. I used to use it. It was nice because I had taken this eight-month-old puppy to a dog park, and there was probably 20 dogs playing, and I had a crowd of people around me because they're like, how do you get this little dog just to sit and do nothing? Well, because of the impulse control. She, all she wanted to do was play with my with the dog fishing stick. She ignored everything else. And I, Well, I was training her to be a, a service dog. But she needed to be able to ignore everything else. And like I said, they were in awe. I'm like, there's so much more you can do with prey drive versus just food motivators. And we just have to feel it out. Uh, were you going to take the ingredients and... Yeah. Oh, I'm just on my way. I just keep... Trust so me, I can I talk have, eight hours about behavior. So if anybody's bored... Today, yep, we're going to get them. Because you, you need to yeah. see to know. And say, yeah, you guys need to see and understand. But I, it's just if it's behavior related, I can talk for eight hours. So if you're ever bored... Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right, ready? So I guess it would be easier for them to be in the next era just so they can see it. Okay, and you'll see the energy level is so cool. It goes from here to down. And you can actually see him. I'll bring him out. You can see where he's probably going to mouth. 